Hello students. Today we are going to solve the exercise of lesson number 3 Diversity in Living Things and Their Classification. Standard 6th Maharashtra Wood and myself Mrs. Prachi Surudikar will explain you the exercise of this lesson. Before that please like, subscribe and press the bell icon. The part 1 of this exercise which comprised of question number 1 to question number 5. If you want the answers of those questions, I have given the link in the description box. Please click on that. So now let us start with our exercise. Question number 6. Write answers to the following. First question is, what are the parts of a plant? So here in this answer, students, you have to write all parts of the plants that you can see every day. So we'll start to write the answer. The main parts of a plant are first roots, second stem, third leaf, fourth is flower and fifth is fruit. So here point wise format you can write this answer. As I told you before also, in science, you have to write all the answers in a point-wise format. The second question, B question is, what are the functions of root? Now you all know where are the roots present. Where are they present? They are present under the ground. They are present in the soil. So now we will have a look on the function of these roots. So the answer is the functions of the root are as follows. First, roots hold the soil firmly and anchor the plant. So whatever the strongness of plant is there, that is just because its roots hold the soil very nicely, very strongly. That is why. So second point is the main function of the root is to absorb and transport the water and nutrients from the soil. So, whatever the water and nutrients are present inside the soil, that is absorbed by this root and that is transported to each and every part of the plant. The root of the carrot and radish also store the food. So, storage of the food is the specialized function of the root. Now C question is why is it necessary to classify living things? The answer is it is necessary to classify living things because first point up to now information about lags of plants has been collected. You know that there is way vast data of the plants and animals. There are millions of varieties. Second point is, while studying the diversity in plant, it creates a lot of confusion due to large number of living things. So whenever you go to study such vast data, there was a lot of confusion among the scientists even that how to study. Third point is, hence to avoid this confusion, classification is important. So for example, I am telling you, if you take the example of mango plant, so there are again various varieties of the mango plant. So there was a huge confusion and hence to avoid that confusion, the classification is important. Fourth point is, it gives uniformity. Uniformity means uniqueness. Wherever you go in the world, if the classification is being done, Anyone can identify, can recognize that plant. Though there are so many language barriers, geographical barriers, etc. So it gives uniformity. Fifth question is, similar organisms are grouped together in classification. Hence their study become easier and convenient. So all same organisms come in one group and hence their study become very easy. D question is, what are the criteria used to classify living things? The answer is, the criteria 
used to classify living things are first similarities in their structure their organs and their other characteristics second is differences in their structure their organs and their other characteristics next question is tell some characteristics of creepers so creepers are the plants which spread on the ground and you have to write the characteristics of those creepers so first point is the stem of creeper is very flexible soft and green they are their stem is very flexible that is why they are spreading on the ground and they cannot stand just strongly like banyan tree or a mango tree second point is it grows rapidly with the help of support if these plants got support they can help grow rapidly the third point is they spread on the ground now the next question is explain the characteristics of herbs with two examples so the answer is the characteristics of herbs are first points herbs grow 1 to 1.5 meters tall what are herbs rose is the herb periwinkle is the herb so by taking their picture in your mind you can write these characters that herbs grow 1 to 1.5 meters tall that is medium height second is the stem of herbs are green and fit flexible as compared to those of trees and bushes third point is herbs may live for a few months or up to 2 years so the life span is important over here and the fourth is example what are the example of the herbs fenugreek periwinkle plant rose plant as i told you the next question is on the basis of which criteria will you classify plants and animals answer is first point plants are classified on the basis of their height the shape of the stem period of life cycle and habitat you know that the plants are differ tremendously in their heights you know the rose plant you know the mango plant so there is a tremendous height difference so that can be a criteria for the classification shape of the stem some plants are having very fragile very hollow stem some are having very huge stem the life cycle is also different of each and every plant and the habitat habitat is the place where that plant is growing so these are the various criterias on basis of these criterias the plants are classified second is animals are classified on the basis of the cell structure vertebral column method of reproduction and habitat you know that now cell which is having various cell organelles so that is the criteria for the classification vertebral column some are having vertebral column some are not having so this is another criteria for the classification of animals similarly method of reproduction and the place where that animal is living that is habitat that are the various criterias on which the animals are classified next question is what protects the bodies of animals first point of the answer is some animals have hard shell on their body for example tortoise you must have seen that hard covering on the tortoise just to protect him from any other adverse condition it takes all its organ inside that shell and it acts as a protective shell second some animals have fur or many hairs on their body mostly the animals that are present in cold regions they are having this fur and hairs the example is sheep third point is some animals have spines on their body spines are nothing but thorns very sharp thing on their body the example is porcupine fourth point is some animals can change the color of their skin 
and do camouflage what is camouflage camouflage is to adjust with the environment suppose the trees are green then you know that the chameleon can convert into the green color so that it can it will not be visible easily so this is camouflage so this camouflage is also the protection of the body now the question number seven is draw figures question is draw the figure of a plant to show the parts namely root stem and leaves in it so here i have drawn a normal diagram of the plant so you can draw any diagram of the plant in which you can show the various parts but remember you have to label this diagram if you don't label it then it will become just a drawing which will not give you marks so labeling is very important in case of the science so here you can draw the diagram and you can label it you can see the leaves over there you can see the fruits over there roots underground stem flowers so in this way you have to label this diagram so students we have covered question number six and seven and hence we have completed our exercise even i'm again telling you that if you want answers of question number one to five you can click on the link which I have given in the description box thank you students thanks for watching